Today is Spotify Wrapped Day. Yeah. Yeah. The day that Spotify looks at our music and reminds us that we're all a basic bitch. <laughs> and you know, I was thinking, thank God Tinder doesn't do a year-end wrap-up. <laughs> Just to remind you of all the terrible decisions you made on desperate nights. I was like, wow, I did a lot of people with pet snakes this year. <laughs> In international news, the United Nations has officially added the French baguette to the UNESCO World Heritage List. <laughs> Which... It's cool, but it's another reminder that the United Nations really needs to eat lunch before making big decisions. <laughs> it's like, should we give Chinese food a seat on the Security Council? I'm so hungry. <laughs> and you would think that this is great. I see some of you clapping. Oh, yeah, I love baguettes. But remember, now it's protected by the UN. <laughs> yeah, so now every time you try and take a bite out of a baguette, a peacekeeper's gonna jump out and kick your ass. They're like, pa, ah, stop that shit. Meanwhile, in presidential news, Joe Biden's Secret Service detail had a bit of a scare recently when five cars they had rented suddenly burst into flames after they were returned to Hertz rent a car. Yeah, now the good news is Biden has got full coverage insurance. <laughs> the bad news is Senate Republicans blocked it, so he's gonna need to borrow some money from Kamala now. <laughs> but my question is why is, the, why is the Secret Service even renting cars from Hertz? <laughs> Am I the person who was thrown by that? What, like, like, what happens if the SUV they want isn't there? What, now the president is rocking up to a state dinner in a Hyundai? Is that how it's gonna work? <laughs> oh, and while we're talking about things exploding, experts say the United States is now facing a shortage of bomb-sniffing dogs. Yeah, which probably explains how Morbius made it into theaters. <laughs> and it makes sense, you know, when you think about it. You know? Of course, this was always gonna happen. If you had the choice of being a bomb-sniffing dog or a drug-sniffing dog, what would you choose? <laughs> huh? What would you choose? <laughs> so simple. Yeah, option A, you might explode. Option B, free cocaine. I mean... <laughs> it, is, it is hard for us humans, though, you know, because now, you know what this means, we're gonna have to resort to bomb-sniffing cats. <laughs> And their noses are good. They can figure out where the bombs are, but they just won't tell us about it. <laughs> yeah. The cat will be there like, mm, I have nine lives, bitch. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to some of the biggest stories of the day, starting with the 2022 midterms. And I know what you're saying right now. You're like, but Trevor, the midterms are over. I killed them. I watched them die. Well, you thought you did. <laughs> but you never took a headshot. And after you left, the midterms busted out of the dirt, and now they're back. <laughs> because down in Georgia, they're just a few days away from a runoff between incumbent senator Raphael Warnock and the reason you're pulling your son out of football, Herschel Walker. <laughs> and we're gonna tell you all about the latest updates in another installment of Vote Demic 2022. <laughs> there is now less than one week to go until the Georgia runoff election, and once again, Herschel Walker is battling controversies. First of all, he might not even live in the state that he's trying to represent. Yeah, according to new reports, the Georgia home that he's claimed as his residence has actually been rented out for years. Yeah, and apparently Walker even admitted in a speech earlier this year that he lives in Texas. <laughs> Which I was shocked about because I did not think Herschel Walker knew the names of two different states. This was <laughs> really impressive. I know this might piss some people off, but when you think about it, this just proves that Herschel Walker views Georgians as family because he's never around them. <laughs> and of course, of course, there's the other problem for Herschel Walker, which is that every time he speaks, things go wrong. <laughs> for instance, Walker was recently at a campaign stop giving his views on the border, right? And in his speech, he's trying to explain why he will build Donald Trump's border wall. But in a way that only Herschel Walker can, he goes on to debunk his own argument about a wall <laughs> and then takes us on a wild ride that somehow involves his dog. Secure this border. They said, how are you gonna do that? I said, well, I can do it then. You need to put up a wall, a wall to work. Wall working around your house when you got a wall around your house, people don't do it. They, have a, they can get in, but you know what? They get in, it'll be hard to get out because I got a dog that, well, my dog really won't bite, but he's pretty bad anyway, but anyway. I'm 
sorry, what? <laughs> Did this man just win an argument with himself? Because <laughs> he's like, I think his plan is to, what, build a border wall so that he can trap immigrants inside America? Is that what he's doing? <laughs> you see, once they get in, they can't get out. Then they gotta get a job and raise a family, settle down, and that's how we get them, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like Walker started out talking about border security and then ended up telling everyone how to break into his house. <laughs> and personally, I don't think he needs a wall, you know? Because the hardest part about breaking into Herschel Walker's house is figuring out which state it's in. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> joke's on you. I actually live in Kansas, Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but let's move on to some news from social media. Ever since Elon Musk pranked himself into buying Twitter for $44 billion, <laughs> he has been trying to reshape the entire website according to what he likes. He's brought back thousands of suspended accounts. He's made it easier to get a blue check mark. And now, any number you tweet is automatically changed to 69. <laughs> yeah. You post that your dad only has three days left, now he has 69. Nice. <laughs> Rest in peace, but nice. <laughs> but Elon's biggest promise is that under his leadership, Twitter is completely open for free speech, no matter how wrong that speech might be. A potentially dangerous new change on Twitter. The social media site is no longer enforcing its policy against COVID misinformation. Twitter suspended more than 11,000 accounts for breaking the policy and removed almost 100,000 pieces of content between January of 2020 and September of 2022. And Musk is promising to restore many previously banned Twitter accounts as soon as this week. Health experts are concerned that it could diminish efforts to stop the spread of the virus and could discourage vaccinations. Okay, look, maybe this is my vaccine microchip talking, but <laughs> I don't think it's responsible for Twitter to bring back the people who are spreading COVID misinformation. You know, but, but on the other hand, on the other hand, it is 2022. Like, how can you still be misinformed about COVID? You know, we're just running around like, I heard the vaccine turns you into a lizard. Mother it's been three years. Do you see any lizards? <laughs> You see any lizards here? They're probably hiding. And, and forget COVID for a second. It's crazy that anyone would go to Twitter for any medical information. <laughs> you know, people should be going to the doctor for this stuff, but because no one can afford a doctor in America, people are out here searching hashtag bump on my dick and hoping to find the cure. <laughs> They're like, cocaine on my penis? That's not what I was looking for. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on to some news coming out of San Francisco. Like many big cities, San Francisco has been struggling to get crime under control. And if you're thinking, oh, it's San Francisco, what are they doing, prescribing all the criminal CBD oil? No. <laughs> I mean, yes, but not just that. <laughs> they also have a more hardcore solution. New this morning, San Francisco officials voted to allow city police to have remote-controlled robots that could use deadly force in extreme situations. Critics of the decision say it militarizes San Francisco's police, but city supervisor Rafael Mandelman, who voted in favor of the robots, said that the killer machines would only be used if lives are at stake. SFPD said they don't have pre-armed robots, and they don't plan to arm the ones they do have with guns. Assistant Chief David Lassar said they could could deploy robots equipped with explosives. Wait, 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 what? What? They're not gonna arm the robots, they're just gonna give them explosives? That is much worse. <laughs> who, who came out with that PR statement? Don't worry, people, the robots aren't gonna have guns, they're just gonna be suicide bombers, okay? <laughs> Calm down, everyone's going. <laughs> this is such a bad idea. Do you know how often robots make mistakes? Can you imagine if Siri had a bomb? <laughs> It was like, hey, Siri, play 21 Savage. Now killing your family. No! No! Wait, which, which members of my family? But still, no! But let's talk about it. Now, to be clear, just so we're on the same page, the robots will not actually be deciding when to use deadly force, all right? They will still be trained human police officers on the remote control trigger. So don't worry, it's still gonna be mostly black people that get killed. <laughs> and it's wild. It's wild how cities can always find money for high-tech gadgets for cops, but when it comes to investigating or, like, investing in long-term solutions that might actually fix the problems, then their pockets are empty. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, robot money. We got that. We got that. People asking. They're like, wait, you're building robots that are police with bombs? Can, can we do something about, like, the homeless people? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, the robots can blow them up, too. Yeah, we can handle that. 
it makes no sense. But that's it for the headlines. Before we go, let's check in on the traffic with our very own Roy Wood Jr., everybody. <laughs> What's happening, Africa? This is crazy with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, man. It's a good time. Hello. Okay, yeah. Man, what's up? Traffic. Yep. What's happening in the traffic? I mean, you see the traffic. Some people out there, and some people at home, they ain't out there. <laughs> That's how it is. Hell, they need to get a robot to do this shit. This would need to be automated. Also, man, I don't know why everybody's so worried about these robot cops, man. Because truth be told, this ain't the first time that this happened. There was a robot cop program in, in Detroit back in the late 80s, and it was a robot officer. He took down a heinous drug dealer named Clarence Bodecker, but... Ultimately, the program got scrapped because the robot thought he was a real person on some Pinocchio shit, so they had to <laughs> stop that. Roy, that, that was RoboCop. <laughs> yes, yes, that was RoboCop, whose real name was Officer Alex J. Murphy, who was shot in the line of duty, and they turned him into the RoboCop. No, no, Roy, Roy, that's not a true story. That was a movie. <laughs> you bullshitting. Or the movie. Oh, okay. Well, if you say so, man. But anyway, I don't know why everybody's assuming that the robots are going to be bad. Why do you assume that the robot cops are going to be bad? If anything, the robot cops will get all of the, 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 the messed up cops off the street. I ain't scared of no robot cop. You scared. You scared. Of the robots? You're scared of a robot cop. You're not scared of a robot cop? No, I'm not scared of no robot cop, man. Half of these robots don't even recognize black people. I can't get the sink faucet to turn on. What are you talking about? Robots don't recognize black people. I can't get water out the sink. The facial recognition don't see me. Bring on the robot cops, because maybe now black people will finally be invisible to the police. I'm with it. I'm perfectly fine with that. Black people invisible to the police, and now finally we can commit our crimes in peace, just like white folks. <laughs> but you want the traffic, though. You yeah, want yeah the let's do the traffic, Roy. Here's his thing with the, with the, with the, with the bomb dogs, though. <laughs> This is the question I feel like nobody's asking about the bomb dogs. If yeah. there is a shortage, if there is a shortage of bomb sniffing dogs, yeah. shouldn't you shut your ass up about it <laughs> and not tell anybody? <laughs> shouldn't you not tell anybody? Just, just. You just can't let everybody know you ain't got enough bomb-sniffing dogs. ISIS at home watching CBS. Like, yes, now is the time. <laughs> Plus, you don't need a bomb-sniffing dog. You just need people to think you got a bomb-sniffing dog. <laughs> just put regular dogs in the airport. That's all you got to do. All these dogs up for adoption, put them in the airport. It's just in the mind? Yes, all, the illusion of security. That's all you've got to do is make people think your stuff's... I got a car. It ain't got no car alarm. People walk past my car. I, I make the noise with my mouth. <laughs> That's all you gotta do. And plus, we ain't gotta, we ain't gotta really worry about bomb-sniffing dogs, because let you tell it, the bomb-sniffing dogs will eventually be replaced by robot dogs, right? Yeah, probably. And then robot dogs will be operated by fully robot cops, and eventually one of those robot cops will go haywire and kill a bunch of people because it needed drugs, and <laughs> the only way to stop a crazy robot cop is to get a brave robot cop to jump on the back of that robot cop and pull off his access panel, get into the neural cortex, pull out the brain, and bash the brain on the ground. <laughs> That's how you stop. The crazy robot cop. I feel like that's the plot of Robocop 2. <laughs> yes! Based on the life of Officer Alex J. Murphy. <laughs> Robocop 2 was a brave biopic. How do you not know this shit, man? I thought you was educated. Man, let me just do the traffic, you man. You know what? We, actually, we don't have the time. Roy, would you no, no, we everybody. Got time. 